Hey, Genki Call here. It is the week of November 7th, and there is a ton going on, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to hop right into the bad news right off the bat with the nerf. Oh, I'm so sad. They killed my banner. <laughs> my favorite banner. <laughs> okay, I'll stop being dramatic. <sighs> the maze banner is no longer plus two green, plus two red. They have fixed it to match all of the other banners in the game. So no longer is the maze banner the most powerful in the game. It is just a banner like any other. And it's fine. But I'm sad. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> all right. So, oh my goodness gracious, look at this, folks. Look at this. I have never, ever, ever seen so many things going on at once in this game. It's overwhelming. Why? <laughs> Why, devs? Why? Why you do this to us? Why so many things at once? You're killing us. You're killing us. Ah. There's that drama again. Melodrama is fun. All right. So let's go over all the things. So many things. Oh. You're killing me, Holmes. All right. Kingdom Pass. Kingdom Pass. So that is this thing right here. And basically... What you have to do is you have to find up to 10 Battle Crashers a day. Every five that you find will unlock one of these steps. And um, then you collect your rewards. There is um, a pass here that you can buy for, for me, it's $8 uh, US. And the rewards that you get are kind of overwhelming underwhelming. I've seen people saying that they absolutely will not buy this pass because this is an existing pet, not the new one. That's because the new one is in the other event right now and they didn't want to mess up us spending bunches of gems. So, uh, so the new pet, we've got some new troops in here that you can check out. Uh, 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 let's scroll down to the good stuff. As far as the free stuff goes, on the last day you will get oh we get an imperial along the way on the free side that's nice uh we will get this weapon provided that you get your 10 battle crashers a day now you don't have to have 10 and there is a one week like grace period where you could make that up if you miss some along the way but i mean this looks okay for an armor adding weapon. I mean, there are troops that do this kind of thing, but, um, you know, it's based upon the fact that you're going to be fighting things that will make you burn. You could get an extra turn, you get a barrier, so it's something a little different. I haven't looked at the upgrades on it, so um, as far as the paid side goes, we've got the Battle Crasher, Pyro Pyrophemus, sorry, took a second. Pyrophemus is our Battle Crasher. And what's that mean? Well, let's go over what he does first. Damage to one enemy, boosted by burning gems, burning allies, and burning enemies. You can do a bit of damage with this guy, but, you know, Magma Dragon hits all enemies and still has a boost. And it's just kind of underwhelming. He does create a burning gem when his turn begins. Magma Dragon also creates burning gems sometimes. You know, it's random, not every turn, but... Eh. Uh, 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 we've got this. The Ace of Wands. <sighs> one magic to an ally. One. Just one. And I've seen people complaining about this. How could that be working as intended? One magic? Are you kidding me? When we've got troops like the Emperor that will boost all stats based on the magic? What? I think that the devs were banking on this third trait here. One magic to all allies every time you match four or more gems. This could be very powerful if you have a team that can loop nicely and you've got something on the team like the Consort of Darkness or the Archduke who have an insta-kill chance based upon their magic. So and maybe it'll be okay, but the spell itself is absolutely pitiful. <sighs> Book of Deeds, always nice. Got some more troops over here and that you can check out on your own time because this is going to be long, long, long video as it is. But there is a money-locked weapon. This will be available 
in the Soul Forge the next time we come to Broken Spire, or next time we go to Broken Spire, which could be in a month, three months, a year. We never know. Well, I don't know about a month, but anyway. it It's a really weird spell. So basically you want to hit something in a corner somewhere. I, I don't really understand how this is going to work. I'm betting that this is going to uh, have bugs because it's a really weird mechanic. It's a new mechanic. So eh, we'll see. We'll see when uh, people start unlocking it, whether or not it's bugged out. But anyway, that is the Royal Pass, the Battle Crashers. Basically, you will see uh, Pyro Pyrophemus crash into your battle, much like a gnome, and it will have this little crown thing on it. Every time you kill one and you have to win the battle, then you'll get another Kingdom Crown. So, next up. Oh, devs, why you do this to us? Uh, yep, don't forget to head into the shop and um, grab your new troop here. Um, the Raksha Swabby, who will do that. Um, Captain Sal Saltclaw is our new legendary. Now, um, I did mention that on the thumbnail, I almost forgot Captain Salt Claw is available in the, uh, with your event keys only in Blackhawk. Well, your event keys are for Blackhawk. Um, but let me show you what he looks like. This guy. So he's available only with event keys. Let's go into Blackhawk. Might as well go in here and show you what you can get with your event keys this week. That would be right here. And let me sort by base rarity and also show all. I think I have them all, but uh, this is actually going to be a good week to spend event keys, in my opinion. I love Megavore and Sycorax. And if you're an end gamer, you're going to want this new legendary. So, all right. Megavore eliminates all armor from all enemies, does damage, and then submerges himself. But he also has a chance to kill the last enemy on 4 plus gem matches. And I have had him do this through the entire enemy team. I used to run him with Beatrix in Delves because Beatrix got so many match 4s. And she created brown for him. And it was just really, really useful before I got High King Iron Gut. Um, then we've got Sycorax, which is amazing for Guild Wars. It, it's... A troll. It's a troll, basically, and it will double a chosen color, but get any color on the board, and then create three more, just like any troll. Also gives life to all allies of the color that you choose, which is what makes it so great for Guild Wars. I have a, um, I have a Mythic Spotlight on Sycorax that I will link in at the end here. There will be a thumbnail that you can click on in the last 15 seconds of the video so that you can learn more about Sycorax if you wish and how to use him to the best of his ability. I haven't ever really paid much atten attention to his traits because the spell is so good for mana gen. Uh, Bio Blackheart, you will not be able to get Bio Blackheart. You will not be able to get Deathblade or anything from the Blackheart. Plate Crafter and the last one is Night Arrow. Those you have to get with your Chaos Shards down at the Black Heart in the Underworld. The rest of these, though, are available to you. And let's go over them. Cat Macaw is significant. He's part of the Mother of Darkness team. I think I'd better write some stuff down here because I'm going to forget. So we've got, I'm going to put the Mother of Darkness made a team um, thumbnail. I'm going to put the Sycorax thumbnail um, for those videos so you can see how Captain Macaw is used. He insta-kills anything that is submerged. Anything except for the player-owned um, Leonis Tower and Enraged Karindara. Those are the only player-owned um, troops that cannot insta-kill if they are submerged. And then of course in, um, Raid Boss Zulgoth and anything in a tower, a tower event, not anything, but any tower at all, they're all impervious completely, or invulnerable, my bad, invulnerable. But um, the thing about Captain Macaw is that all rogue allies start with 50% mana, and uh, Mother of Darkness is a rogue, and he gives her a 50% mana start. Really fun team to use, uh, a little slow, but fun and very effective. Like I said, that'll be linked in at the end. New troop, 
Captain Saltclaw does heavy splash damage to two enemies boosted by blue gems. One to one ratio, so if there are ten blue gems on the board, you'll get an extra ten splash damage there. Now heavy splash damage, it says right here, if you're ever wondering, you can always look over here and see if it explains. Um, damage to a troop and anything that's nearby will get 75% of that damage. So, um, anyway, uh, Kraken. Um, he's, there's a 35% chance to devour the last enemy, and that's a pretty good chance to devour, but it just... I haven't had much luck with it myself with devouring, but he does create the blue gems. He does hit two enemies, making him good for events when there aren't uh, when there aren't troops that can do damage to all enemies, for instance. And he does do damage to all enemies on four plus gem matches just a little bit. Then we've got Scylla. Oh, another one. Another one I need to link in. Ah, Scylla. Scylla is fart. Par fart. <laughs> Not a Freudian slip. I really wasn't thinking that part. <laughs> Yay! She is part of the the Skull Waterfall team by Artless X Arts. I can't remember. He has another Nick. Sorry, I can't remember your other Nick. But this team is so so fun. I I call it in my um in my video. I call it Boom Max Fun. So keep an eye out for that super fun team. Just, you you get this team going, and the Skulls waterfall, and they just blow everything away. And the reason she's on the team isn't to cast this. It's for the Bone Storm. Um, more on that if you check out the video. Bunny Rose, you get, I think, for doing the storyline here? Maybe not. Uh, damage to an enemy boosted by gold, 2 to 1 ratio. So if you have 100 gold, she'll do an extra 50 damage. And she also gains a little bit of gold when she casts. Um, the Water Spirit, one magic, eh, starts battles with 50% mana, which is nice. Captain Skullbeard is a surprisingly good mana generator. He creates some skulls boosted by treasure maps. I mean, who pays, pays attention to their treasure maps at this point? But then he explodes a bunch of gems. And so you get an extra little poke there. It'll help break barriers when you blow things up to have a skull of three or five on the t on the board um so you get some extra gold on four plus gem matches and again with the water spirit can't get first mate axe lover did i go over yes first mate axe lover now this is one of the empowered mana converters he's blue to red and he starts with full battle or for full mana making him really good for being a troll and using those book teams during Guild Wars. <laughs> I had to throw that. Oh, little Johnny Bronze is the one we get here. My bad. Uh, Kendrala Blood Jewel. She is our God Slayer. If you face her using Zolgoth, be sure to take her out first because she's going to do this 3 to 5 damage um, with her spell and skulls. Um, and then she gets her mana back if the enemy dies. So, yeah. Little Johnny Bronze, you'll get him, like I said, he creates skulls plus four more for every treasure map, and then has a chance to gain a treasure map. Um, again, bonus gold from battle. This is like the um, necromancy trait where you get bonus souls. This is bonus gold that you can get. Um, plus, I mean, he's not bad for um, getting some extra gold. Quick Paw Jack steals gold from the enemy and deals damage to the enemy boosted by the gold stolen. So if he steals 100 gold, he's doing an extra 100 damage. Wow! Um, and he is um, half mana start, and he can dodge, which means you can put him at the front of your team if you want. Red Charlotte is our Siege Breaker with the 3 to 5 times damage to towers. That includes... Um, and, um, Leona's Tower, sorry, and, um, yeah, to get a little gold. Scurvy Sea Dog is another empowered mana converter. Um, this one is green to blue. Again, if you want to be a troll in Guild Wars, this is a great one to have. Shocktopus, uh, Shocktopus can be good. It does true damage. Um, it could be good in Guild Wars because maybe for defense. No, you can't count on it to pick the right color, though. But anyway, um, destroy gems of a 
chosen color. It's only eight, but you get eight mana of whatever color you choose. I tend to go with uh, yellow or green to keep mana for him, and then does true damage to each enemy of that color. It just depends on what you're facing. So the water link is very, very helpful. Um, then we've got Willie the Anchor. What a useless troop. He gains some gold and uh, submerges himself and moves himself down to the bottom of the team. Woohoo. He does have Greedy, though, which, you know, that's okay. Uh, Dragon Turtle. Damage to the first enemy, then submerge myself. Skull damage reduction by 50%, so uh, I guess it's okay. Mimic. Uh, I hate either or either or troops, and I hate fighting this guy because he can devour you. Uh, Mosasaurus. Damage to an enemy. 50% chance to devour if the enemy is submerged. So basically... Yay. Um, 50% is pretty good. So if you're fighting something submerged, you don't have um, Captain, Captain Scurvy, then this is a, a choice. Um, bum bum, and the water link, always, always a good thing, having that extra mana from every uh, match you make. Rakshiswabi. This is, again, either or damage or life. And... If you have the new legendary on your team, he can b creates nine blue gems. Sharky, scatter damage boosted by gold. With a three to one ratio. So if you have, a, say, let's say 99 gold, because easy math, then it will do an extra 33 scatter damage. Pretty useless unless you have some uh, event medals to boost the spell or something. Ah, ha, ha, deckhand. <laughs> This is, this is, he's a pretty good mana generator. Create five purple gems, then create, transform all pl purple gems blue. Could be useful with Mother of Darkness. If you don't have the Night Spider, I suppose. Ah, uh, Narwhal. That's interesting that they put the E on there. Sorry. Um, destroy a column. Deal damage to the last enemy. Submerge myself. It's true damage. And the water link. It's, and, oh yes, a chance to create a wish gem at the start of every turn. Uh, the parrot is annoying to fight because he silences and he's immune to silence himself. Damage, silence, 50% chance to, um, you want to use it like splash damage because it has a chance, 50% chance to silence one or both of the adjacent enemies. And he's a bounty hunter. That'd be useful. I uh, never use him, but pirate. Allied rogues gain 40 attack. Uh, get This should say get 10 gold, boosted by allied rogues. And then, again, with the water link, hammerhead also has the water link. Damage to the last enemy, and if they're damaged, deal double damage. That's kind of cool. Ship cannon. Damage to three random enemies. <sighs> That's a lot. There's still so much more to go over. So much to go over. Is it a wonder I haven't done it yet this week? It's because I am terribly swamped, but I am not able to sleep, and I'm too tired to do anything but this right now. So, um, let's see. Next up, oh, devs, how could you? All this stuff. Oh, I'm going to get to that in a, in a minute. Uh, so the, today we have the Bagate Pet Rescue. This is a, this is a, sorry, decorative only pet, um, for the, Gems of War Anniversary, uh, Bagate, Baguette, uh, funny! Uh, speaking of anniversary, we do have this calendar every day. We will get something free on the 13th, so be sure to watch out for that. That's probably Sunday. Um, so we're getting something free. Don't just ignore the pop-ups because you'll miss things. <sighs> All right, what's next? Well, first, let me just double check something very quickly here. Um, oh my gosh, yes, there's more. Ugh, so much more. We're just going to keep going across the board this way. That can wait. That can wait. Oh god, there's Guild Wars. There's Tower of Doom. We still have the new Mythic Sagittarian in the drop table through Thursday. Friday reset, he drops back down in the drop table and you'll be able to get any mythic with your regular you know when i say regular keys uh this 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 and this 
these four types of keys, you'll only be able to get Sagittarian through Thursday. But after that, you can get any mythic. Uh, next up, we've got oh, the Tower of Doom. So we've got Guild Wars. I hope that you remember to set up all of your defense teams and that you've been doing your battles. And then Tower of Doom. I put out a video with some teams on this at reset on Monday just so that you would have some stuff right now. Um, let me show you the team I'm using, and I will add this into the description. Um, da -da -da. Uh, Doom. Tower of Doom team. I have to make notes. All right, so this is what I'm using. I'm going all in on skulls with the Tower of Doom. And then... Next up, because I'm just so afraid I'm going to miss something. Next up, okay. <sighs> Let's get to Legends Reborn. So if you're seeing this green exclamation point on your screen and don't know what it's for, it's like, it's not Soulforge, what is going on? There's no exclamation point here anywhere. Look, it's Legends Reborn. So even if you decide not to do the storyline, which, you know, you've got these freebies, you can you do the storylines across the next two week period and you'll end up with a mythic, a free mythic um, pet here for um, Broken Spire. But click over here. Um, those, these lanterns that you've been collecting that you may not know what they're for, they're for this Legends Reborn event. And if you click on show rewards here, every 50 that you get is unlocking another tier. All you have to do is click and collect. Um, you know, it's a long event and, um, is it two weeks? I'm losing track. There's so many things going on. So, but it's a free pet you get just for killing, um, what is it? Um, what color enemy? Purple enemies. Kill purple enemies, 300 of them to get that for free. Once you do that, then you unlock the next tier. I am purchasing this silly pet because, you know, it's an, cheaper than going into a pet rescue and then buying it in a pet rescue. Um, so I'm going to, I went ahead and did that. I am not paying 80 bucks for this new, uh, mythic, uh, pet buff. Sure, I want it. I'm not paying 80 bucks for it. I mean, you will get a, the, uh, mythic that boosts in furnace. You'll get the power orb and everything else you see here, including all of the stuff on the right. Again, not paying 80 bucks for that. I'll pay the gems for this, but that is it. Meh. Meh to you, uh, devs. Mm, so greedy. All right, so we do have more stuff to go over. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Got a little wookie in me today. All right, let me pull this up for you folks. Hold on just a second. Here we go. Uh, where is it? Boop. There it is. Okay. We've got the anniversary going on. Went over that. Broken Spire re rework. Now, I mentioned that something got buffed. Lots of things got buffed, but one thing in particular got buffed that's super cool. Super happy about. But let's go over stuff. So, troop reworks. There's a lot to go over here. I'm going to add a link to this page um, into the description box below. I think I'll remember to do that. Uh, if I don't, let me know. But... Um, yeah, there's a lot to go over here, but some traits have been changed, um, some spells have been changed, like the Fortress Gate. It only, it'll give armor to allies only if there are 13 or more brown gems on the board. Rhinax spell does splash damage instead of light splash damage. That's a positive change, but he no longer gains magic at, at these levels. He only gains magic at levels 18 and 20. Fire Lizard now creates three burning gems instead of seven red gems, so he is much less useful now. Um, Etten, his role has changed, so from Generator to War Master, that's important for when you are um, buffing the troop with metals. Spell 
has been reworked. So now he creates four skulls for every purple gem removed instead of buffing his attack. So that's actually more powerful, I think, but more risky, of course. And now there's a new trait, Ogre Fury. Um, Stone Giant no longer destroys red gems, which is a shame. It would be much more helpful if they had left it red gems for this particular kingdom. Uh, instead of removing red gems. So before it removed the red gems, it didn't destroy them. There's a big difference. Remove, you get nothing out of it. It just removes them. Destroy means you get that mana as if you matched it. So Stone Giant would have been too powerful if it had destroyed red gems. <sighs> Obsidian Titan. So the Obsidian Golem, Golem is now the Obsidian Titan. They renamed his spell for some reason. Um, it does... Damage to an enemy boosted by all enemy constructs, and if the enemy target is a construct, it will deal triple damage. That is significant. Triple damage. Yeah, that will help. Um, the da -dum -dum, I forgot to do something. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, lava elemental. Anything significant here? Oh, it's doing damage to all enemies and burning them now, um, but the spell damage is has been reduced. Um, and it no longer gains magic at all of these levels, so it's not as powerful. It's now a mage, and cost increased from 10 to 13. Well, it's doing damage to all enemies now, so that makes a difference. Let's just pop in here for... You should be able to see this, I think. Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's just check out the Lava Elemental real quickly here. Lava Elemental, I mean, it's not bad for an Ultra Rare. It's really not bad for an Ultra Rare. I love that it does damage to all enemies. That's going to be really helpful for quick delving for people that are lower level, so that's cool. Ah, uh, Taraxis has had some changes. Rhinogor is doing heavy splash damage instead of splash damage, so 75% damage to adjacent enemies instead of 50 Pigra is creating seven red gems instead of five. Yes! They made Pigra more powerful. I love that. And the chance to summon another Pigra has been increased to 30%. Okay, that's a nice buff. Luther spell will also bar barrier the first ally. Ooh. Nice, that's cool. Leader trait, uh, grudge trait. Nah. Shegra spell now creates seven red gems instead of six. So we've got a little bit of a boost to Shegra here. We also have a boost to Shegra with the new pet. Ooh, tributes. Let me grab those real quickly. Uh, 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 that is this one. Legends Reborn. So, Shegra. Yep. Shegra gets those bonus, um, points from this. So we got a double buff for Shegra. And then, uh, 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 Gog and Good. Uh, okay. So, I, st I still don't think he's going to be that. Yeah, I'm just reading it. I, shh. Ah, ah, oh, and here's the buff I was talking about, the mega buff that I love so much. Ah, oh, I love it. I'm not going to love fighting it, but Amarok's base damage has been doubled. So it's um, magic times two plus four, I believe. Um, so if he doesn't devour, you're still doing more damage. And, you know, for Mythic, he should be doing more damage with his spell. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, da -dum -ba, and so base devour chance increased from 2 to 10%. That's huge. Plus the red gems increase. Um, the red gems increase your chance of devouring as well. So <laughs> we will not be offering any troop refunds. I know. These have either been buffs or sideways changes. Okay. I don't care. So the Kingdom Pass is... There's more information here. Um, if you wish to read about it, I already kind of went over it. Um, and then these are the new troops that are available on that paid side. Um, 
And then, yeah, we went over that. Uh, re replay the story, blah, 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 blah. Earn rewards. Yep, I went over all of that. Oh my gosh, is that everything? Is that everything at last? Oh, it's so much stuff. I Nope, nope, that's not everything. There's more. There's even more. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Hold on, let me fix this. There. So, there's even more. So, tomorrow, we have the class trial for Corsair. Corsair is, um, it's not bad. I'm not going to be able to do the video for it. I apologize. So, I will go over Corsair class here really quickly. Oh, yeah, right over here. Corsair class. Corsair. This has its uses. This is really good with a gold farming team. Um, for one thing, you get bonus gold from this. Um, you get bonus blue mana, which is really useful because you're going to be using Cedric on a gold farming team. Um, then you've got the talent trees. You can Hunter's Mark or Snap Freeze, whatever you choose. I actually would like Hunter's Mark better. Immunity to frozen, frozen, light fingers. If you're going for the gold farming, very, very helpful. Um, extra life, you can have that bandit resummon, which is great, actually. Um, especially if you haven't traded that. If you don't haven't fully traded that bandit so that it is stealthy, then you have a fully stealthy team and they have to target the bandit. Mwahaha. Um, Submerge a random ally on four post gem matches can be very, very helpful. Extra blue mana, again. And then, um, you know, if you're running with rogues, um, like you want to use Corsair class with the Mother of Darkness team I mentioned, you've got that. So, <sighs> what's next? What's next? Ugh. Devs. Devs, you're killing me. You're killing me. Why? Why? Sorry, I didn't leave that up long enough. Why? There we go. So I kind of accidentally clicked it too soon. Um. So lastly, is if we did not have enough going on this weekend, we have invasion this weekend. Oh, I hope that I'll be able to get you some teams. But I will put a link at the end of this video for my fourth linked video at the end here with how invasion works. Um, for those of you that don't know, I will try to get a, a team video out for you. I just don't know if I'll be able to. I am amazed I've been able to sit here for this long and do this. So I hope to be back to you folks again um, more reliably soon. And these next couple weeks are just going to be crazy, crazy. And I don't know how much I can be here. Thanks for hanging in with me, folks. I'm sorry that this is getting to you so late. Oh my gosh, there's more. Soul Forge. I forgot the Soul Forge. Let's go over that. This video is going to be like an hour long. Oh my gosh. Soul Forge. Let's go over that. Infernal King. So, Infernal King is part of that meta team. I was just going... Oh my gosh! Is this the one? No, 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 no. Okay, it's not Infernal King. It's Wrath. Okay. Scylla is part of that team I was just going over. I mean, I was talking about for the Skull Waterfall. So, if you don't get her from your event keys and you're desperate enough for the to try the Skull Waterfall team that you would spend 800 diamonds on it, here she is. Um, Infernal King, he's a double mana converter, with the skull and mana converter, green to skulls, brown to red, and does a little bit of sc scatter damage, it's a little bit of damage, that 25% chance to resurrect after death is a pain, and he burns enemy when doing skull damage, but he has no skull damage reduction or dodge, so, eh. Um, he's not one of the popular choices for the double, the mana, and skull conversion. But he is effective. Um, let's do... Ah, Divine Ishbala, however. Super useful. Um, red gems to skulls, green gems to yellow. She's divine. 40% mana start for all divine allies. She's really good um, on the right team. She is very, very good. Lust, however... Oh, yeah, yeah. I would never spend 800 diamonds for this. But then again, I never use her because I hate her. 
charms an enemy, 40% chance to transform them into a succubus or incubus, which will kick your butt. Incubus charms two random enemies, not just one. So if you turn an enemy into an incubus, they're going to take out your team with charm. No thank you. Hate this thing. Meh. And she charms a random enemy when an ally dies. Now that's pretty useful. And if you've ever seen the double lust teams in PvP, I hate you people. Stop trolling us. Um, yeah, really annoying to fight. Uh, 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 uh. Would I spend 800 diamonds on any of these? Unless you're desperate to try out the troop, you have a team you want to use it on, or you are um, troop blocked. You're, um, you're blocked by your troops on your power levels in your kingdoms, I would not spend 800 diamonds on any of these. Save them for a mythic that you really want. Famine? Famine is one of the apocalypse troops. I recommend not crafting any apocalypse troop till you have every other mythic in the game because they have no kingdom. And so you cannot help your kingdom power levels because they have no kingdom. Do the ones that are going to help your power levels first and save the apocalypse troops for last. Um, drain mana from all enemies. That's nice. And damage to one enemy boosted by the mana drained. So if you drain 40 mana, you're going to do an extra 80 damage because it's times two base boost ratio. I don't think this is a bad troop. I do not like that it doesn't boost your kingdom power levels, which is why I recommend waiting to craft it. Uh, 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 uh. Then we've got the Champion of Anu. Silence, stun, and drain all mana from an enemy. Deal damage to all enemies below them. Or to them and all, all enemies below them. So basically, if you hit the top troop, it's doing damage to the entire team. But it's not considered AoE damage. So it will hit submerged troops. Very nice. Skull damage reduction by 60%. Also very nice. And blue allies gain one to all stats at the start of each turn. This is something you could throw on a team with, say, Consort of Darkness to boost that magic so that he's more likely to insta-kill. There are other ways to do it, but uh, let's see. Then we've got, these are always here, Consort of Darkness, which I was just talking about. A uh, chance to slay an enemy boosted by your magic. So whatever your magic is, plus one, is your chance to insta-kill the enemy. So raising his magic, at some point, it's going to be where he is 100% going to kill them unless it's in Rage Kurandar or Leona's Tower, Raid Boss Zulgoth, or any tower like Invasion. It won't work on towers in Invasion either. Um, and then steal six life from the first enemy when matching purple gems. So if you've got a heavily purple team... He's going to be stealing lots of life, and he has spell damage reduction, making him a little hard to kill sometimes. And he does summon a dark storm at the start of battle. So I feel like I missed something in here. There should be more. Oh, I forgot Scylla. Wait, no, Scott, Scotty. One, two, three, and four. Okay, yes, the last one is Scotty. Mm, Scotty's okay. Freeze and mana burn the first two enemies, knock them to the last position, summon Queen Mab. Queen Mab is more useful because she will freeze a random enemy on match fours. Um, but what makes Scotty stand out is she is the only troop in the game that creates an ice storm at the start of every turn. So you can have a perpetual blue gem storm by having her on your team unless she gets stunned or killed. So that is what we've got for the troops. So wait, wait, let's double check. I'm looking for Centurigon. No, and... No. One of these days he'll be back in there, hopefully. All right, as far as weapons go... Oh my gosh, yes, Tower of Doom. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So we've got the Frost Sword. Damage to the first enemy, deal triple damage if they use red mana. That could be really useful if you're fighting a red team on blue Guild Wars Day, or if you're using it on defense for blue Guild Wars Day. Triple mana, I mean damage, that's, that's significant. Uh, and it looks like it freezes uh, probably the first enemy as well. 
<sighs> then we've got Ocean's Protector. It seems like I used this on the last... I think I've used this. Eliminate all armor from an en enemy. Gain life equal to the armor eliminated. So if you're doing a level 500 delve and you remove 400 armor, you're getting 400 life for your hero. That is tanking. And you're going to barrier yourself as well when you cast with this. So, I mean, on high level, really high level events and such, this could be very useful. You know, I've never really looked at it before. <laughs> Captain's Cutlass. Cutlass. Captain. Captain's Cutlass. I, I don't care. Captain. I like Captain better. Uh, damage to an enemy boosted by rogue allies and create a mix of six blue and red gems for each rogue ally. I don't know about the colors, but it is for rogues in general. It's not limited to Blackhawk, which would probably make it a little bit more useful. Then we've got the Flintlock, a, a little more useful than the Pirate's Signet, which I think does the same thing, only for Blackhawk, yes, blue and red for Blackhawk allies. So I think the other one's more useful, but they do use different colors. This is brown and purple, and the other one is brown and purple. What the heck? Why would you even craft the pirate signet? Why? Why would you do that? When the captain's cutlass is going to do? Oh, maybe they're not all. Maybe they're not all rogues. Okay, they're not all rogues in Blackhawk. Okay, that's why. My bad. All right, flintlock of Blackhawk. Blah 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 blah. Remove all blue gems. It will not do anything, will not get you any mana. However, it will boost your spell and if and deny your enemy the blue gems. And if they're from Black Hawk or the battle is in Black Hawk, do double damage. That's one of our nice cheapo 75 gem ones. I just went over Pirate Signet. The Doomed Chris, do not get this in the Soul Forge. Save your diamonds. Get it in the Tower of Doom event. If you're going to be buying. Let me show you. Hold on. You know how I love my visuals. Let's go into Tower of Doom. So if you're buying sigils anyway, and who's not buying sigils um, so that you can get these forge scrolls that are so hard to get, but if you can afford it, it's much more cost effective to just get it with your gems here in the shop than to use your precious diamonds on getting it. Because you're going to get it for free here if you're buying stuff here anyway. So... I think there is one last thing in here in the Soul Forge to go over, but you know I had to give you my my visual. Uh, 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 uh. Yep, one more thing. This is I believe the first time Rose's pistol has been available for free. True damage to an enemy, and if Bonnie Rose is on my team, gain forty gold. So. That is what we've got. Finally, at last, I've gone over all the things. I think that I remembered everything. I'm sorry for the length of this video. I just I just don't have time to make all of the thumbnails and do it all separately. I apologize, but I hope that you found what you needed in this video. Please like and subscribe, and let me know if I miss something down in the comments below, or of course if you have any comments or questions. So please like and subscribe if you will, and we'll see you folks soon. Bye-bye!